Just a few days ago, Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a high-level meeting to assess the progress of Bharat's Gaganyaan mission. And now, ISRO is gearing up for the maiden human space flight program with the launch of a test vehicle mission. The launch of a single-stage liquid rocket will signal ISRO's journey towards its ambitious human space flight program, Gaganyaan, when the first crew module test to ensure the safety of the astronauts will be conducted by the space agency. The test flight is scheduled for 8 a.m. on Saturday, the 21st of October, from the first launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. ISRO aims to send humans into space on a low Earth orbit of about 400 kilometers for a three-day Gaganyaan mission and then bring them safely back to Earth. First, let us tell you more about the mission Gaganyaan and what it aims to actually do. It's Bharat's first manned mission to space. It's three crew members in space for three to four days. Mission would be to do a 400 kilometer low Earth orbit. Crew will then splash down into the Indian waters. Now, fourth nation, we will be, if we do it successfully, to launch a crewed spacecraft in... Uh, and of course, let us now tell you, understand what's the best vehicle abort mission, what is this test vehicle abort mission all about, and why it is so important. Abort and crew escape system will be tested in this. It is similar to ejection seat in fighter jets. The goal of the maneuver is to safeguard the lives of our crew, engineered for automatic function at any altitude, and the test flight will simulate an abort condition during ascent. The goal is to test crucial system in case of an emergency. But the test will have to pass a crucial 100 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Six seconds into the flight, the FIN or the FIN enabling system will be activated when the pressure exceeds 1000 pascals. Nearly 61.1 seconds after the launch, when the vehicle reaches a Mach number of 1.21 at an altitude of 11.9 kilometers above the Earth's surface, the crew escape system will separate from the rocket booster. The crew module will then separate from the escape system, crew escape system at an altitude of 16.9 kilometers. And as it travels at a speed of 550 kilometers per hour, the separation will happen nearly 91 seconds after the launch. The vehicle then enters the coasting phase where it continues to ascend without propulsion. The drogue parachute is then deployed next, slowing the vehicle's descent. The final descent with the main parachute begins at 98.14 seconds. The mission then culminates with a safe splashdown of the crew escape system in the sea about 14 kilometers from the launch site. The success of this test flight would set the stage for the remaining qualification tests and unmanned missions. If the test vehicle abort mission 1 is successful, ISRO will start then preparing for test vehicle abort mission 2 early next year. This will be followed by mission 3 as well as mission 4 for 2024 to test critical aspects of this entire mission. In addition, the team has also planned two uncrewed missions with robotic payloads LVM-3G1 and LVM-3G2 to demonstrate human safety of the mission before it gets to go ahead for the final flight. The human space flight program has both tangible and intangible benefits for us as a nation. It will lead to many more experiments with space flight missions. It's a fillip to Bharat's dream of setting up its own space station, advanced technology capability for undertaking human space exploration, sample return missions and scientific exploration. Also, it will create a broad framework for wider academia, industry partnership in taking up development activities for national development. And there is ample scope for employment generation and human resource development in advanced science and research and development activities. It's a unique opportunity to inspire and excite Indian youth and steer many students towards careers in science and technology. The program will also strengthen international partnerships and global security through the sharing of challenging and peaceful goals. So all in all, it's the big test and if we get the first step right, then we move on to missions 2 and 3. A short while ago, we had former ISRO chief G. Madhavan Nair speaking with us here on the right stand, explaining to us this entire test mission and why it is so significant and what to expect. Listen into this conversation. G. Madhavan Nair Ji, Namaskaram, thank you very, very much for speaking with us at C. CNN News 18. So this Gaganyan uh, test launch, which is going to happen, how significant is it? And can you please explain to us what's the reason why this is being done, why it is important to be done? 
you know the objective of the gaganyaan is to carry three astronauts to the orbit and uh, their safe return to the ground after the mission completion uh, so the safe return is something which is very very important uh, so the crew while the rocket is going up or any phase of the launch uh, there can be and there can go to some problem or other Uh, there is a fine chance of such probabilities with the Kadi previous flights of Apollo and other things very much visible. So to ensure the safety of the crew is the most important aspect, and that is the element which is being tested out uh, in the launch, which is scheduled for day after tomorrow. Uh, here, actually, the crew module with the escape system is assembled on a test rocket. Uh, it's not the real uh, launch vehicle which is going to take that. but a vehicle which is configured using the same engine as what is being used in the uh, the GSLE Mark 3 so you know there is a proven engine which is being put there and it will be taken to an altitude of about 10 kilometers or so and crossing the mac 1 uh, that is you know the transonic region is where you know it experiences maximum disturbance in terms of vibration shock acceleration and all those things so that phase will be over so one can ma- monitor the conditions inside this, uh, the capsule then afterwards while the, it is thrusting itself how the capsule can be separated and taken to a safe trajectory to land in the sea so this is the mission objective so to demonstrate the crew escape system in case of an eventuality is something which is planned in this mission how is it different or uh, are we taking any learnings from Uh, other manned missions by other nations so uh, say an apollo or or some of the other missions that have been taken where manned missions go into space and then they come back there's a reentry that happens so are we taking some of those learnings or are we trying to do something different from what some of the other nations have been able to do uh, well certainly the apollo missions uh, they have taken a lot of risk uh, the vehicles uh, the launch vehicle was in the development of saturn vehicle was being tested out and so on but still uh, kennedy has uh, president kennedy has uh, announced that we should plan on the moon so they took a lot of risk in going with a sort of an unproven system uh, to accomplish the mission but it was successful in the overall program of about 16 missions or so there were hardly two failures but two failures is big number uh, when you talk about this uh, overall program so iso cannot afford to do that so that's why so set a goal first let's ensure the safety safety can come from various first make the launch vehicle reliable test it out number of times and build in additional margins the design margin design can be improved and redundancy can be implemented and onboard monitoring uh, to forecast eventual any problem which can occur uh, and then take action this kind of uh, escape system has come in the much later flights of apollo and uh, in the soyuz as well uh, but in the initial phases they didn't have it so naturally we have benefited out of their experiences and that that concept is being adopted but the technology for that is a home grown it is so has to toil to develop this and earlier they have uh, demonstrated this at a very low altitude and now it is going to be uh, crossing the mac 1 region but there is also the challenge one is the challenge is to reach up to 10 kilometers so as you are lifting off and then the in, but even the redirection or reentry there is a huge amount of burn and uh, friction with the atmosphere that will be cause a great amount of heat that will be generated so will that also come into play will that also be tested whether the aircraft uh, well, uh, craft can withstand it Uh, you, you, are, you are correct. Actually, we will have a lot of heat generated during the re-entry of the capsule, and that is one of the big challenges in design of the uh, the crew module itself. Uh, that, of course, is going on parallelly. Uh, but here, we will not be achieving the orbital velocity. Velocity, what is going to be achieved is around one point two kilometer per second or so, whereas in the orbit, we encounter something like seven point five kilometer per second. with that velocity when it enters almost everything will burn up of course we have wetted our hands in this earlier in the spacecraft recovery module experiment so there you know we have brought a live spacecraft from 500 km altitude down to the sea 
and uh, that is something which was uh, demonstrated and we had some elements of technology demonstrated from that and that this uh, knowledge is being utilized for uh, designing the thermal protection system so thermal protection system per se will not be proven in this whereas the acoustic protection the how the shock bounds and uh, how the comfort level of the crew is ensured etc will come out because we have uh, crossing the transonic region and uh, afterwards uh, it is uh, the rocket which has to pull it out uh, during the thrust phase and throw it in a trajectory which will ensure that uh, safe landing on the sea initially it will be a free fall but later a set of parachutes will be opened and that parachutes will reduce the velocity to uh, maybe a few meters per second and then uh, something like a soft touch down will take place and when it touches down on the sea surface uh, there will be floats which will be activated automatically and then the system will be floating in the sea and it has to be picked up from there uh, so that's the kind of mission which will that part of the mission is going to be demonstrated in this is this the first of many test flights uh, mr madhavan nair and uh, for this test flight what do you think will be perhaps the biggest tick mark or the biggest success that uh, isro will actually be looking for to achieve uh, well one thing is uh, the on board computer system and the software to monitor the performance and uh, to take real time decisions on uh, that sound part the second part as i mentioned earlier is uh, the environment inside the crew module uh, the third will be the physical process of the tori of course when you are coming from the orbit also uh, when it uh, enters the atmosphere around 100 km onwards the heating is there uh, but then you know because of the aerodynamic uh, heating itself it will slow down uh, to a reasonable thing and then later thrusters will be fired and uh, when it reaches around 10 km it will have more or less similar speed as what we are going to do now so in the last phase of touchdown is what is going to be demonstrated in this uh, mission you think this is uh, happening because there is a lot of support that's coming in from the government that there is an acceleration there seems to be an acceleration in our space program uh, in the recent years uh do you think there is a perhaps a mix of not just scientific and technological innovation and improvement but also certain amount of encouragement and political will my final question sir uh certainly i i think uh, i am reminded uh, i was really excited to hear the statement from the prime minister that day uh it reminds me of the days uh, of uh, 60s when president kennedy made this announcement to the us but he made only a small step that is go to moon but here our prime minister has set a goal not only moon a space station and even the mission to mars and so on so he has given a tremendous boost to the space program uh, probably i will say that this is the third vision for isro which is given the first vision given by dr sarabhai then the second vision of course uh, i was part of that we have given in the uh, 2010 time frame and that is being implemented now even before completing that he has given the third vision which is super and uh, it is going to really ignite the entire space program and the space activities and the technology development in the country it is going to be the major driver of technology development for the nation thank you very much for your time sir i look forward to speaking with you again post the test launch and let's hope we have achieved and we achieve all the parameters that we set out to and it's a successful test for all of us as a nation and for the scientists of isro thank you very much sir i wish you the team isro a grand success in this mission as well thank you thank you sir